In the previous videos, we have seen that the head produced by an impeller at a fixed speed and inlet volume flow is a constant. This formed the basis upon which we have derived the procedures accounting for changes in inlet conditions. Now, as long as your compressor performance curve takes the form head versus inlet volume flow as depicted here, then you can use the procedures we have developed so far to obtain accurate results. However, keep in mind this methodology is no longer applicable when your compressor performance curve takes the form discharge pressure versus inlet volume flow. Why is that? Because unlike head, the discharge pressure developed by an impeller at a fixed speed and inlet volume flow is not a constant. It heavily depends on the inlet conditions. A minor change in these conditions will result in a new discharge pressure, even if the compressor works at the same rotational speed and inlet volume flow, as depicted here. So, whenever your compressor performance curve takes the form discharge pressure versus inlet volume flow, then in order to predict your compressor performance at inlet conditions different from the rated ones, you need first to adapt your performance curve to these new inlet conditions. Now, the real question is, how to do that? This section will show you exactly how to do that. Here again, the effects of system resistance downstream the compressor discharge flange will be neglected. These effects will be discussed in detail in a later video. Now, to illustrate the procedure of adapting a compressor performance curve to actual inlet conditions, I will use the following example. Here, in the yellow cells, you can see the rated inlet conditions, as well as the rated compressor performance, which takes the form discharge pressure versus inlet volume flow. These data are provided by the manufacturer for a single stage centrifugal air compressor. Of course, the procedure I'm about to show you is valid for any type of gas and for multi-stage centrifugal compressors with somewhat reduced accuracy as the number of stages increases. Here I have specified the actual inlet conditions, which as you can see here, are completely different from the rated ones. For example, inlet pressure was changed from 14.5 to 16 psi. Inlet gas temperature from 550 to 400 degrees Rankine. Gas compressibility reduced from 1 to 0 0.5. Molecular weight from 28.7 to 42. And the polytropic efficiency from 1 to 0 0.6. Now, here, based on these new inlet conditions and for each volume flow, I have calculated the actual discharge pressure using the following equation. Recall, this equation was discussed in detail in a previous video. Notice here that under these new inlet conditions, the discharge pressure has increased compared to the rated performance. For example, for an inlet volume flow of 30,000 cubic feet per minute, at rated inlet conditions, the compressor is expected to develop a discharge pressure of 20.9 psi. Under the new and actual inlet conditions, for 30,000 cubic feet per minute, the compressor will develop a discharge pressure of 75.6 PSI. So, as you can see here, the compressor performance in terms of discharge pressure is heavily dependent on inlet conditions. Any deviation from the rated inlet conditions will result in a discharge pressure different from what can be expected from the performance curve. 
Now, since compressor manufacturers will not normally supply performance curves for other than rated inlet conditions, then it becomes extremely important for you to know how to account for your process condition changes by modifying the performance curve of your compressor. This will help you better operate your centrifugal compressor and know if it is performing its duty correctly. You can use this methodology to modify your compressor discharge pressure performance curve for any type of gas and for multi-stage centrifugal compressors. Keep in mind, however, that this methodology will remain valid as long as the deviation from rated inlet conditions does not exceed plus or minus 20%. In other words, to put it simply, if your rated inlet pressure is, let's say, 100 psi, then this methodology remains valid and will yield accurate results as long as your actual inlet pressure falls between 80 and 120 psi. If your actual inlet conditions deviate from the rated inlet conditions as provided by the manufacturer with more than plus or minus 20%, then you have two options. Either request from your manufacturer an updated performance curve that matches your actual inlet conditions, or use an advanced compressor simulation software with rigorous thermodynamic models. I personally recommend the first option. It is faster and cheaper. The second option is a lot more expensive and requires you to have a strong knowledge and expertise of the compressor simulation software. Having said that, and from my industrial experience, it is quite rare that a centrifugal compressor is used in a process where the inlet conditions deviate more than 20% from the rated ones, as these machines are extremely sensitive to gas properties. So, the good news is, in most of the cases, applying the methodology that I have given you in this video will be sufficient enough to predict with a reasonable accuracy your compressor discharge pressure performance. In the next video, we will take the challenge to the next level and include the effects of system resistance on compressor performance. By understanding how the system resistance impacts a centrifugal compressor performance, you will be in a better position to use performance curves to evaluate the behavior of any centrifugal compressor in any type of piping system.